Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at Blackview's latest new flagship dash cam, the DR900X Plus. And in this video, I wanna go over all the different uh, changes and improvements here with this new Plus model compared to the DR900X, including uh, the upgraded video quality. This is the main thing that I wanna focus on here in this video as well as the improved Bluetooth seamless pairing process to get the dash cam paired with your phone and the improved Wi-Fi hotspot capabilities of the dash cam if you add in the CM100 LTE module uh, to give the dash cam its own internet connection to share. Now, full disclosure, this is not a paid or sponsored review. I've never done those and I never will. Blackview sent me a production copy of the DR900X Plus to test and review here for this video. I do get to keep the dash cam after testing, but I'm not otherwise paid or compensated in any way here for this video. If you'd like to buy a copy of the DR900X Plus, I'm gonna have some affiliate links down in the video description, uh, as well as some discount codes for you. And using those does support my channel and it allows me to continue doing tests and videos like this here for you. And so with that said, let's go ahead and dive into all the new changes and improvements here with this upgraded DR900X Plus. Now, first things first, let's go ahead and talk about the improved image quality here of this new dash cam. Now, the Plus model has the same image sensor for the front dash cam, as well as the same lens in front of the sensor. However, Blackview says that they've improved the image signal processing, the software in the dash cam, uh, to improve the video quality both day and night, and I can definitely confirm that that's the case. And the improved image signal processing, it's actually due to a new processor that's been installed here in the upgraded DR900X+. The rear dash cam has also been upgraded. It now features a Sony Starvis sensor to specifically improve the low light performance, and I have noticed that here as well. Now, starting off with the front camera, I'm definitely noticing some improved image quality, and specifically uh, an improved ability to capture details such as license plates. In fact, I did some comparison testing with the older DR900X, the new DR900X Plus, and the Thinkware U1000, which I'm using kind of as a benchmark, especially because its video quality is better than any previous Blackview dash cam. And all of these dash cams record in 4K. Now, starting off with a parking lot test, the DR900X, uh, it can make out plates of cars that are directly ahead, um, and it can also make out plates as the cars start getting a little bit farther away, but it gets a lot tougher to make them out. On the other hand, the DR900X Plus and the U1000 do a better job of maintaining detail and clarity. Uh, it looks like the DR900X Plus now seems to be holding its own compared to the U1000. And here's another example of this while driving. Uh, if you take a look here at the silver SUV on the right, all of the dash cams are able to capture the license plate. However, if you look at the white minivan in front of me, this is about the closest that I got to it, and it's just a little past the limits of the DR900X's resolving capabilities. Admittedly, it's still tough for the other two dash cams, but they give you a much better chance of being able to hopefully make out plates in case something happened with the car and you really need to capture those license plates and report it to police, insurance, or anything else. Additionally, I've also noticed that the Plus model has improved dynamic range. For example, look at the trees and the shadows over on the left side of the frame. Now, to be fair, this is with the DR900X's HDR feature actually disabled. I'm not a fan of using that feature unless I'm specifically parked. And I mainly use its HDR night vision capabilities for nighttime parking recording, and we'll get to nighttime recording here in just a second. If we take a look at some other testing with the HDR night vision feature enabled here on the older DR900X, you'll notice that the overall exposure between the two dash cam looks pretty similar. Uh, I do notice that the highlights in the cloud are a little bit more blown in the plus, but I also get better shadow detail with the cars over on the right. Uh, again, we've got similar exposure levels, but I think the plus does a better job of preserving detail of the cars on the road, and that's really the main thing that you want. Not so much the clouds necessarily, as cool as that is, uh, but really the detail of the cars in case of an accident or something actually happens on the road. And here's another test with the HDR feature turned on on the DR900X uh, actually driving into the sun. You'll notice the DR900X does a better job, uh, again, with recording the clouds up in the sky, and then looking at the road, especially for the exposure levels and the overall levels of brightness, you notice that those are gonna be really similar. It's not like the dash cam is just making everything darker to compensate. And then if you look at the detail on the cars, which is the main thing that we wanna focus on, again, it seems to be easier to make out info about the cars, like maybe the make and model or any car details here uh, with the newer version of the dash cam, the Plus. And so I found some advantages to both versions of the dash cam, but I think overall I prefer the images coming out of the Plus because it seems to do a better job of just uh, capturing what's going on on the road around you. 
Now, after I finished shooting this video, I was going back and watching more footage, and I noticed that it looks like there is some built-in HDR capabilities uh, that are running here in this DR900X+. And you'll notice that sometimes when there's really fast action, uh, like right here, for example, you notice behind the car, there's kind of this light spot. Uh, you'll notice this happening when it's trying to combine a dark and a light exposure, and something's moving really quickly, and it doesn't quite blend them right. This is one of the examples of when you may see a little bit of weird artifacting with HDR turned on, and it's one of the reasons why some people may actually want to turn it off. Totally user preference, and to be honest, most people probably won't ever notice or care. It's not a huge deal. And for most people, the trade-off of having the better dynamic range is worth any sort of weird little artifacting, especially because, well, you need the dash cam to record stuff, and the HDR feature can help ensure that you're able to record more of the scene. Now, I'm totally nitpicking here but I personally would still like the option to turn off HDR if desired, but I can understand that for most people, yeah, they're gonna be happy with HDR on and are gonna have no issues with it. And so either way, yes, it does look like there's a HDR that's built in and turned on, and there is no way to disable it here in the DR900X+. Next, let's take a look at the image quality from the rear dash cam. It records at 1080p instead of 4K like the front dash cam. And overall, honestly, the video quality is nothing particularly special. Uh, it works, it does the job, it's able to record what's going on behind you, but it's not gonna be 4K the way the front dash cam is. Now, this is really normal though. I haven't seen any dash cams by any manufacturer that do 4K front and rear. Usually you do have reduced uh, video quality and resolution with the rear dash cam. Now, I've looked at a couple different uh, daytime sample clips with both the DR900X and the newer DR900X Plus, and honestly, the results look pretty similar. I don't see a huge difference. The main differences I find with the uh, upgraded new rear dash cam seem to actually present themselves at night. Now, something I've noticed though in testing is there does seem to be some sample variation between different copies of the rear dash cam. The rear dash cam, it's the exact same one that comes with the new DR750X+. And while I was driving around and testing the video quality with the uh, 900X+, I noticed the rear camera looked a little bit soft. And so for that reason, I took the rear camera from my 750X Plus, again, it's the exact same camera, and I plugged it into my 900X Plus. And I noticed that when I did that, the video quality seemed to look better. And if you take a look at this comparison here, you'll notice that the plate is crispier and easier to read uh, when I'm using the rear camera that comes with my DR750X Plus. You'll also notice that the grass and the leaves are also sharper uh, when using the 750's rear camera. Again, they're the exact same camera. Uh, there just seems to be some sample variation between different copies of the camera. And this is also something that I've noticed over the years testing a variety of different Blackview dash cams is there can be uh, some sample variation. So your mileage may vary on this. Next, let's move on and take a look at some nighttime dash cam footage. Now this new dash cam, it doesn't use a faster lens or an upgraded image sensor. Uh, all the changes here are gonna be done with the image software processing. And what I noticed comparing the newer dash cam to the previous model is that the front camera is a little bit brighter. It's not a massive difference, but it is an improvement nonetheless. And actually here's a better clip to show you the difference. Uh, this is a clip of a car actually running a red light in front of me. The DR900X Plus does a better job of recording both the car and the road around me. Now, don't expect magic here though. The DR900X Plus, it's not able to stop motion at night, and I'm not able to capture the plate either with either the front or the rear dash cam. So just wanna set some realistic expectations here. Freeze framing license plates on a car that's moving uh, at night, that's really tough for any dash cam. So just wanted to mention that. Nevertheless though, I do notice that the front camera is more sensitive at night. It does a better job. You can more easily see the road. Uh, you can see other cars and you can see what's going on on the sidewalks as well. And so overall, I find the Plus to do a little better job in dark nighttime driving. Uh, the two dash cams are more similar at recording stuff directly ahead of you, but if you look to the far left and right sides of the frame, uh, beyond where my headlights are directly shining, you'll notice the Plus is better able to see into those dark shadow areas. Now the older DR900X, it has an HDR night vision feature that you can enable. The previous clips that I've been looking at uh, were with the feature disabled. And you can certainly turn that feature on on the DR900X if you like. I only use it uh, when parked, uh, but for normal driving day or night, I actually leave the feature turned off. On the newer DR900X Plus, they've actually removed uh, any HDR or night vision features altogether. It's just gonna be much more automatic. But that said, I wanted to go ahead and do a little bit of testing uh, with the feature on and off on the previous model, the DR900X. So starting first with the front dash cam, uh, here's some testing actually parked in a really dark neighborhood. Now between the two cameras, I find the DR900X Plus does a much better job, uh, especially at capturing any detail on this dark street here. However, if you enable night vision mode on the DR900X, uh, it brings it much closer to the newer Plus model. I do think that the Plus does a little better job of seeing details when it's dark like this, but overall things are still pretty close here. 
And then if we take a look at the rear dash cam next, this is actually where I notice a little bit more of a difference and specifically because uh, there's an upgraded Sony Starvis sensor that's available now in the rear dash cam. And compared to the previous model, again, the newer dash cam is gonna do a much better job at night. Uh, if you compare the two models, you'll notice that with the newer dash cam, uh, it's much easier to see the road and the sidewalk in case people or cars go by. And then if you turn on the night vision feature on the DR900X, I notice it gets a lot better, especially in terms of brightness. However, I do notice that the video becomes pretty noisy and grainy. Uh, it's easier to see if you're watching this on a big computer screen compared to a smaller phone, but nevertheless, the newer dash cam I've noticed does a better job of uh, brightening up things at night while still maintaining better video quality, which seems to be one of the big advantages here of using a more sensitive and newer Sony Starvis sensor for that rear dash cam. And so overall, I'm liking the improvements here that I'm seeing with this new Plus model. Uh, I'm seeing improved image quality and ability to capture fine details, whether it's faces or license plates. I'm liking the improvements to the dash cam's dynamic range. I'm liking the low light capabilities, uh, both front and rear, and also maintaining good image quality without introducing a bunch of extra noise and grain. So I'm really liking the improvements that I'm seeing here overall. Now there's some other differences here in this dash cam as well. Uh, Blackview's actually removed the option for H.265. And so now we only have H.264 available. It's an older and more compatible codec. The idea behind the new codec is it's supposed to improve video quality while maintaining smaller file sizes, uh, comparing videos from both dash cams, maybe DR900X uh, with H.265 and the newer one with H.264. Overall, the main takeaways is they're both using the same bitrate at 25 megabits. Uh, they both have the same file size, but I actually noticed better video quality out of the newer dash cam, the Plus. And Blackview actually says the reason that they've removed H.265 is it didn't actually really make that big of a difference. Plus they wanted the uh, improved compatibility uh, for their new web-based cloud viewer software. Additionally, if you take a look at the uh, other video quality options in the DR900X Plus, you'll notice that they remove the HDR and night vision options. They remove the manual controls to adjust the brightness for both the front and the rear dash cams. There's no longer any sort of manual exposure compensation options. And so now you just set the resolution and the quality and the dash cam just kind of does the rest automatically. Now I was kind of curious how uh, all this automatic stuff worked. And so I did some testing kind of playing around with the different exposure levels and brightness levels. Uh, for example, I tried doing some testing with a circular polarizer, sliding the polarizer on and off the dash cam. And I noticed it compensated and adjusted for that just fine. Polarizers do block a little bit of light. And so I'd expect the dash cam to kind of brighten things up once you put the polarizer on. And I also did some testing with the rear dash cam and the uh, tint on the rear of my vehicle. I tried literally holding the rear dash cam behind my tent, as well as on the outside of the car in front of the window and in front of the tent. And I noticed that while the tent does affect the uh, white balance a little bit, uh, the dash cam works just fine, actually uh, boosting the brightness to compensate for any sort of light loss from my rear tent. And so their automatic options seem to work just fine. And I actually asked Blackview about this. Why did they remove some of the uh, manual controls here and those options? And they said uh, it was a lot of options for their engineers to have to optimize for different brightness levels and different uh, HDR on and HDR off and all that kind of stuff. And so they decided to basically simplify things and allow them uh, to focus on really just kind of one group of settings. So the dash cam works well both day and night without the user having to fiddle with any of the options. And in my experience, it seems like whatever they've been doing with this new dash cam, it seems to work pretty well day and night. Now, I love having the option to control uh, different video quality settings and whatnot, but honestly, I would rather the dash cam just kind of take care of everything automatically. It's not like my uh, DSLRs or mirrorless cameras where I'm gonna use all the manual stuff much more often, or much more often, and I'm sure most people probably want more of a set it and forget it option, just put it on and have it work well. And that seems to be what they're going for here. So yes, they did remove some of the options. I'm not justifying it. I like having the additional controls, but it seems like uh, what they've been doing with their auto exposure stuff, it seems to be working pretty well. So I'm personally pretty happy with uh, kind of what they're doing now here with the DR900X Plus. And something else that for me, I'm actually really happy about is I've been wanting to uh, upgrade the DR900S and DR750S that I've been running in my car so far. I need to run new power cables uh, for the X series and I was gonna be upgrading to the DR900X, but uh, because the video quality with the DR900X has kind of been lacking, I've also been uh, wanting to install the Thinkware U1000 right next to the Blackview just to get the better video quality because up to this point, Blackview's video quality has really been lagging compared to the competition. Now, because I'm seeing this nice improvement here with the DR900X Plus's video quality, I don't think I'm gonna need to install the U1000 next to it to make sure that I can always get a dash cam with really good video quality. The DR900X Plus can do that on its own. 
Plus it leaves that extra room available in my windshield so I can easily run other dash cams for testing and review and that kind of stuff. So I prefer actually having that uh, that real estate staying clear on my windshield. And so uh, I think I'm just gonna run with the DR900X Plus as my only uh, primary front facing dash cam. Next, now that we've covered all the video quality stuff, let's shift gears and talk about their new seamless pairing process. It's basically uh, using Bluetooth built into the dash cam to make it easier to get your dash cam paired with your phone. Uh, the way the process works here in this dash cam is you'll open the Blackview app on your phone and then you'll tap on the option that says connect to camera. Uh, then on the top right corner, you're gonna tap on the plus button and your phone is then gonna search for and find the new Blackview dash cam over Bluetooth. Once it does, you can just place your hand by the motion sensor next to the dash cam to confirm that this is the dash cam that you want to pair. And then it's going to automatically create a Wi-Fi connection between your phone and your dash cam. And so this Bluetooth process, it's just for the initial pairing process. The connection itself that you're going to use full time is still going to be done over Wi-Fi because it's a lot faster than Bluetooth. So anything as far as changing settings, uh, downloading any footage to your phone, live streaming, all that kind of stuff, it's still going to be happening over Wi-Fi. Bluetooth is just there for the initial pairing process. Now, because it uses Wi-Fi, I still run into the same issue sometimes with my phone losing an internet connection because it's trying to connect to the dash cam uh, if the dash cam doesn't have its own internet connection. And so for that reason, you're gonna to wanna to disconnect from the dash cam to make sure that your phone still has an internet connection while you're driving. Now that said, other people online have reported that when they're connected to the dash cam with the phone, they're able to browse the web just fine. And so I went out and retested it, again, reconnecting to the dash cam. And then another time I found that I am able to continue browsing the web. I can connect to Waze just fine and all sorts of different internet connected apps. They all behave just fine. And then again, I did another test later and it wasn't working properly. So I'm not entirely sure uh, what's up with the inconsistent behavior, but it looks like sometimes it works. And in my experience, other times it doesn't. Alternatively, if you have the optional CM100 LTE module that plugs into the dash cam, uh, that's gonna give a dash cam an internet connection and then your phone is gonna be able to use the dash cam's internet connection. Now, Blackview says that there's now a new option as well to where when you close the Blackview app, it's gonna automatically disconnect uh, from the dash cam. That way your phone can still maintain an internet connection. I haven't played with this too much, but they said that's a feature that they've added. Now, this Bluetooth pairing process or what Blackview's calling their seamless pairing process, it's gonna be coming to a number of a previous Blackview dash cams as well. It's gonna be coming to uh, their different X series dash cams. Uh, it's gonna be coming to the X plus series dash cams. It's gonna be coming to the DR752 channel LTE, uh, as well as any future upcoming Blackview dash cams. Now, in order to use this feature with the uh, compatible previous gen Blackview dash cams, you're actually gonna need a firmware update uh, to enable the Bluetooth capabilities, even if the dash cam has Bluetooth built in. And for those of you running the DR750X Plus, Blackview has gone ahead and updated uh, that dash cam, released a firmware update to activate the seamless pairing capabilities. And then a few days later, they released a number of other updates specifically for the DR900X, uh, the original DR750X, and the DR752 channel LTE. So if you own any of those dash cams, you can go ahead and head on over to Blackview's website and update there. Or of course, you can download over the air using your phone. And then a couple other quick things to note, if you wanna get your dash cam uh, connected to the cloud before you had to use the QR code uh, that was both on the box and on the dash cam and scan it with the app, now you're also gonna be able to use the uh, Bluetooth capability to connect to your dash cam directly that way without having to scan and use any QR codes. And then finally, I wanted to go ahead and talk about the uh, dash cam's improved hotspot capabilities if you pair it with the optional CM100 LTE module. That's an optional accessory that has some LTE antennas and then you pop in a SIM card to give it a data connection and then it adds some uh, data connectivity to your Blackview dash cam so that it can connect out to the cloud. Now, previously, you could only have one dash cam or one device uh, paired to your dash cam and give that device an internet connection as well. The dash cam would actually share its internet connection and act as a hotspot. But again, you were limited to just one device. Direct Wi-Fi connection already in use. Now with the DR900X Plus, you can have up to five devices connected. And so your dash cam can become basically a Wi-Fi hotspot for all the devices, up to five uh, in your car. And I've been testing this and I found it to be pretty useful. I run a four channel Blackview dash cam setup. So front and rear for the main ones, as well as left and right. The rear dash cam can now connect to the front one. So the rear dash cam gets the cloud connectivity. I can also pair my different phones to the dash cam. Uh, if I've got friends or family, they now have a hotspot in my car, which can be especially nice if they're coming from out of the country and don't have US data, 
now they've got Wi-Fi in the car. Uh, my Escort radar detectors like the Max or Redline 360C, those can connect to the dash cam now as well. The only thing with those is the Escort radar detectors uh, only support 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, so you are gonna have to go into the Blackview dash cam and change it from the default to five gigahertz uh, to 2.4 gigahertz so that the Escorts can connect to it. So that's the only weird little quirk there, but otherwise you can connect radar detectors, multiple phones, devices, other dash cams, all sorts of stuff uh, to the DR900X Plus if you have the optional CM100 LTE because it allows for uh, not just one, but now up to five devices connected simultaneously. Now, I know a lot of cars actually have Wi-Fi built in directly into the car, and that's super convenient, and a lot of those allow for multiple devices too. If you don't have that capability, and or if you'd also like the Wi-Fi uh, or the cloud capabilities while you're parked, this is where the CM100 LTE comes into play. In-car Wi-Fi is usually only when the car is on. Uh, this is gonna work both when your uh, car is on or and it's off. Now, getting Wi-Fi into your car while you're parked has traditionally been pretty tough. I've been needing this capability, so I've been using third-party LTE dongles and using uh, dedicated battery packs in the car, and I had to make sure that they power on properly and I had the proper cabling. Uh, even after messing with that, I've noticed still some flakiness to where it doesn't just stay on reliably. And so for that reason, even though I have it with third party stuff, I find the new Blackview option to actually work better and more reliably. So I think I'm actually going to switch over uh, to using the CM100 LTE, even though I already have in-car Wi-Fi while parked, because it just seems to be more reliable than uh, the solution that I've been using up to this point. And so if you're wanting the cloud capability for the uh, DR900X Plus, the CM100 LTE makes it a lot easier to do. Plus it's now gonna give you a Wi-Fi hotspot in your car as well for other devices to connect as well. And this uh, upgraded connectivity option is gonna be available for the different X Plus series dash cams. So like your 750X Plus and 900X Plus, for example. Now, speaking of other dash cams, what if you wanna upgrade to the DR900X Plus from a previous gen Blackview dash cam? What mounts and cables and all that kind of stuff are compatible? Let's take a look at that. Now, over on Blackview's website, they actually have an FAQ going over the accessory compatibility uh, with the DR900X and some of the previous models. So I'll link to that down in the video description. And so I wanted to go over not only that, but also some additional information that I found by playing around and doing some testing. Now, the front mount itself that the front dash cam plugs into is going to be compatible with most of Blackview's other dash cams. Not all of them, but most of them. And the same is true with blend mount compatibility if instead of uh, attaching your dash cam directly to your windshield, you'd like to hang it under your rearview mirror. I've been using my blend mount here for all of the sample footage that you've seen here in this video, and it's been nice and solid and stable. Uh, if you wanna get one, of course, make sure you don't get the one for the DR752 channel LTE, that's a bigger dash cam. Instead, get the one that's compatible with most of Blackview's other dash cams, uh, including the DR900X, for example. That's the one that's gonna fit the DR900X Plus, and I've got a link to where you can get more information about it, as well as a discount code if you'd like to pick one up. And then as far as the rear dash cam, you're gonna be able to uh, pop out your old rear dash cam and upgrade to the newer one. It's just gonna slide right into place so you won't notice any differences. That said, I've noticed that if you slide the new dash cam into the old mount, it's not quite as snug of a fit so you can rotate and spin the dash cam and adjust the angle a little bit more easily, uh, but it seems to still hold the dash cam securely nonetheless, just not quite as tightly as before. Now this rear dash cam, it's the exact same one that comes with the DR750X Plus. And so if you want to upgrade to the 900X Plus to get the 4K instead of 1080p up front, uh, you can literally just buy the single channel version of the DR900X Plus. Uh, it has the port on the side to actually plug in a rear dash cam, even on the single channel version now. And you can just plug in your existing rear camera from the 750X Plus. So just a heads up about that. However, if you're upgrading from a previous version of the Blackview dash cam, uh, you are going to actually need to upgrade to the two channel version to get the new front camera and the new upgraded rear camera as well. And then that cable that connects both the front and rear cameras, that's exactly the same. So you can unplug the old one and plug in the new one. Uh, the power cable, it's the new three wire ignition triggered power cable that comes with the uh, uh, the X series dash cam. So if you're upgrading from, let's say a DR900X, it's gonna be the same power cable. But if you're upgrading from an older dash cam, like an S series, such as the DR900S, that does use an older power cable. So you are gonna have to run a new power cable for the DR900X plus. And then if you're running a CM100 LTE, this is the exact same thing that we've had before. So you can literally just uh, unplug it and plug it back into the new dash cam. Now, if you'd like to order a DR900X Plus, they are available now on Blackview's website. The single channel front only version starts at 379 uh, with a 32 gig card. Uh, and then the two channel version that records front and rear starts at 489. Then on Black Box My Car's website, they're available for pre-order. They're not shipping yet, but the ETA is going to be September 20th. They're $20 cheaper at Black Box My Car than they are on Blackview's site. The single channel front only version starts at $359. Uh, and the two channel version front and rear starts at 469. 
Plus, if you use the coupon code VORTEX20, uh, that'll save you an additional 5% off the purchase at checkout, uh, just in case the links in the video description don't automatically give you that discount. So ordering from Black Box My Car would actually give you the lowest price if you'd like to go for that option. And then finally, just one quick thing to note about these little uh, micro SD cards that you pop into your dash cam. Now, normally I run and recommend the Samsung Pro Endurance cards, but lately I've been having multiple issues with both the Pro Endurance and the Evo Select cards in my DR900X Plus. It keeps giving me different uh, memory card errors and then the dash cam reboots and so I've been having issues with a couple different cards. However, when I then switched to the Blackview card and put that one in the dash cam, I haven't had any issues since. I don't know if it's just because I don't use the Blackview cards as often. Maybe it's just both of those cards failing simultaneously. I don't know. But either way, I, I know the Blackview cards are more expensive uh, than the third party ones. It's one of the reasons why I usually go for the third party Pro Endurance ones but I have been noticing better reliability, at least just for myself with the Blackview one. So I just wanted to mention that here as well. And down in the video description, I'll go ahead and link to all this kind of stuff. So the dash cam, both single channel and dual channel, different memory card options or accessories, all that kind of stuff that you may need here. I'll link to all of it down in the video description for you. And so, yeah, that's just kind of my thoughts here as far as the improvements here for the DR900X Plus. I'm actually pretty happy with it. I think this is probably the best uh, Blackview uh, dash cam that they now make. I really like the upgraded video quality. I've long felt that that was probably one of the biggest weaknesses for Blackview dash cams, and it feels like they've really addressed that here uh, with the DR900X Plus. And so I'm really happy to see that. Thank you very much, Blackview. It's not perfect. There's still stuff that can be improved. There always, I'm sure, is going to be. But either way, this seems to be a nice boost here in terms of video quality, plus all the other changes in terms of low light sensitivity, dynamic range, Bluetooth stuff, uh, the new CM100 LTE Wi-Fi hotspot stuff. It seems like it's a minor change, but it's actually quite a bit of stuff that all adds up. And so I'm pretty up, uh, pretty happy uh, with this latest update here for the 900X Plus. And so, yeah, that's my thoughts here on this dash cam. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you found this helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. And that's it. Stay safe. I'll see you in the next video.